be able to say that openly. Now I'm one of a minority of people given the privilege of a functioning future and to be able to embrace the positives of dissociative identity disorder, also known as DID. We are only able to be here tonight on that basis because of some extraordinary people. My inspirational daughter Jemima, the rock to my kite, my hubby Paul, a friend and art assistant like no other, Ruth, and so many other wonderful friends who have become family, Lindsay to name just one more. Family in our adulthood has taken on a new and joyful meaning as we relearn acceptance with awkward honesty and freedom. I was asked to talk to you about my experience of DID tonight. I was also told you have 10 minutes max. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll begin midway through my story if that's okay. So Paul and I had had uh, several personal tragedies and difficulties, but life was settling down. As a couple, we were beginning to dare to think for the first time since the early years of our marriage that we would find normality. Our daughter was just about to turn 16 and two weeks away from beginning her GCSEs, the same age and stage when my mother left the family house. That's when a shard of mirror cut through my vision briefly. It was shocking and it carried a picture from deep in my memory. It disturbed me. The picture was of my mother attempting to drown my sister Caroline. The shards wouldn't stop. <coughs> More of the mirror pieced together, and I turned immediately to my mate Ruth over a cup and a fag, as we turned to each other over most things over the previous 18 years. It was disturbing. Made more so because we both knew that Caroline had suffered from complex post-traumatic stress disorder 15 years before. Caroline had never told me the details of the cause. I only knew that our mother and father had been questioned for child abuse allegations. Something in my gut then had told me that she was right. But I had no memory, only unexplainable excerpts of echoes. I couldn't afford to remember. I had my nine-month baby girl to protect. The police gave up on the investigation with, well, your dad seems like a nice old man, and your sister's very poorly. Caroline, however, was the only person who would, be able to, who would be able to put context to the shards that were increasingly infiltrating my life. So on my way to class in the spring sunshine, and trying to be as casual about it as I possibly could, I phoned her. Forget them. Put them to one side, she said. But clearly she hadn't understood. But do you remember something like that happening? Yes, she replied. But she was desperate to stop me going down a path that she had struggled with for so many years. The trouble was, by now, I had more shards, more mirrors, more questions. Caroline, I know this is probably a daft question, but is it possible that children were killed? I shan't ever forget the heavy cemented pause that hung on the other end of the line. Forget it, she said, but I needed answers. It's possible, she said. I finished the call and went in to teach my class. The following months were a dissemblance of my life. I was held together with drink, starvation, grounding techniques, and the generosity of those who loved me as the shards brought back memories of the horrors of ritual abuse. During one conversation, Ruth and Becky were having a fairly normal conversation as their conversations went. We knew that the cat had been let stupendously out of the bag. Yes, but then you just sort of switch, don't you? Ruth's face said it all. That moment of oversharing. No, what do you mean? You know, when you're just sort of someone else. And this thing that we knew, but didn't acknowledge really, this thing that made us feel apart and numb, was not universal. Ruth asked, 
Do the voices come from inside or outside of your head? Do they came from, from inside, obviously. They were, are, we. The following weeks, I filled in surveys from eminent bodies. Thank you, Valerie. <laughs> and Ruth changed her reading material from studies on ritual abuse to dissociation. And it became clear that I, Jack, could no longer hold my tongue. With enormous difficulty for Becky, she stepped aside and allowed me secretive but public space. We couldn't carry on the way that we'd been going and we had to go to a therapist. We needed expert help and we needed it immediately, just as anyone presenting with the first signs of complex PTSD and DID should get. We were beyond lucky. Not only did Ruth make it her business to drag me to a therapist, she also found a therapist who could deal with this scenario, ritual abuse and DID, in our local area. My luck did not stop there. I am married to a man, sitting with his head in his hands, had promised, despite the huge cost of private treatment, to do whatever it takes to fix me. He has remained true to his word. But it turns out it's nothing to do with being fixed and everything to do with acceptance. And so he's endeavoured to do that as well. 